without faith, without a foundation, uh, I don't really know how one can succeed at the game of baseball or in life. Colorado Rockies outfielder Charlie Blackman demonstrates both. The four-time All-Star spent his entire 14-year Major League career with the same team, leaving a distinction of franchise achievements while only reaching the postseason twice. With his retirement, he stays present in the moment while looking ahead and not glaring at the past. How much of what you do is intentional? Oh, great question. I do go out of my way to be deliberate. I don't want to look up uh, in the future and say, oh, why am I here? I went with the flow, the path of least resistance and feel like I've wasted opportunities. I'm alive, I'm healthy, blessed with a family. I want to be deliberate and make choices that are going to help me and the people around me hopefully lead to greater good. Ultimately only room for one winner. What is the unseen undervalued benefit of non-winning? Yeah, you know, baseball is a sport that I find myself relating to life because of the failures associated with the game, right? The best players still fail 70% of the time. Tom, I'll tell you this, but this is also what I would tell like the eight-year-old team that I speak to. How you deal with failure is way more important than you know how straight your path was to start with. And we haven't always had a winning record, and, and to be honest, a lot of our years have been uh, character-building years. The scripture talks about how long-suffering produces perseverance, produces character, produces hope. Charlie, where does that hope for you come? If you don't have any faith, if you don't have a greater purpose or a foundation, you know, that will fall when shaken. You're not going to understand. You're not going to have any clarity. You're going to have spent your whole life and still be in the dark. So as a recreational property owner, you're studying habitat management. Where's the greatest beauty when natural resources, humanity, wildlife coexist? I've been able to purchase some property. It's part of a conservation program, so it's going to remain wild. A place that I really enjoy spending time and I feel very connected to God when I'm there. I'm surrounded by the nature itself and I begin to appreciate all the things that I'm seeing. Fabric, mesh of soil, plants, insects, birds, animals, that it's all fit together in a way that only God can can make things work. You know, I really like putting a little bit of responsibility on myself to improve that. It helps the habitat. I think it will help the animals. I think me being able to see how things are interconnected is a way to help me feel small again and give me a, a better perspective, but, you know, humble, hopefully. Is there ways, do you think, the church at large, the body of Christ, could learn from that coexistence? I think it's really important for me to look at someone else and say, they're worthy of the kingdom of heaven and Jesus died for them also. Anytime you have a collection of people, concentration of people, you're going to have human nature uh, seep in. Iron sharpens iron. I think it's a place where you can find someone to hold you accountable. You can be surrounded by people who are gonna make you better. I mean, I think the, the church is obviously like a great place to be. What do you feel is growing extinct in our culture and relationships. Wow. I, I, you know, I worry what life is gonna be like for my kids. Smartphones and screens in their faces all the time and people are losing the face-to-face -face connection. It's gonna be less deep-rooted relationships. We've got social media and we've got influencers and, and it's really easy to look at someone and say, wow, they've got it all together and I can't relate to them because my life is so much harder and I struggle with this and this and these people don't struggle with anything and I think that's that's false. Comparison is your enemy. Don't compare yourself to to what you see necessarily and I think that's the importance of having those face-to-face -face relationships and I think understanding that what you're going through is not unique to you. Going outside and finding his presence. There's just something raw and real about that. To know that Jesus Christ had a heart of like flipping the money changers tables, living in the wilderness, you know, had a, a very wild heart. And so that speaks to me more so than the stereotypical, like super straight edge. It's hard for me to feel like I can be that person, but I can embrace the, the wild at heart mentality. And Charlie, he could probably turn a single into a triple too.
<laughs> Don't you think he could round those bases pretty well? I think Jesus Christ yeah. could probably hit a curveball. That's for yeah. sure. What comes as wonder of who Jesus Christ is? I've noticed as I get older, I'm surprised less and less. And so that's something that I have to deliberately make choices to seek his his heart and me as the best father, as the best husband I can be, starts with that foundation. If I'm not continuing to build that, I think it's going to ultimately be a failure for me, but then the people that are depending on me. And I don't want to ever feel like I'm falling into complacency with my relationship with Jesus.